Hey, uh, I'm Frederick. I'm an engineer at Chorus. And um, today I want to talk about Alert Manager on its way to high availability. Um, and in general, I work on upstream Prometheus things, uh, upstream Prometheus Alert Manager and Kubernetes and anything uh, connecting the two worlds, basically. Um, so Alert Manager on its way to high availability, what does that actually mean? Um, so I want to talk about today how do we get, come from an alert firing in Prometheus to an actual notification um, via Slack or PagerDuty or something. Um, then the high availability contract that um, Prometheus and Alert Manager have because they're two separate systems, but we'll see about, about that a bit later. Um, then the actual implementation of uh, this contract and um, what implications this has for running Alert Manager in a highly, highly available manner. Um, yeah, so just, as, just out of context, why is Chorus investing in this? Why is Chorus as a company uh, working on this? Um, so we're doing this as part of our uh, product, Tectonic, um, and part of Tectonic, or the main premise of Tectonic is um, that all your infrastructure is self-updating and we're applying the same principle to our monitoring infrastructure. So we want to have all the monitoring infrastructure automated and um, update, automatically up, updatable. And so Prometheus um, and on top of Kubernetes is, was our choice there. Um, just as a, like a show of hands, how many people are familiar with Alert Manager? Cool. Um, there were like, there was like one hand. So that's good. Um, so features of the alert manager are basically that it receives alerts, it groups them, and sends them out as one notification. So you can logically group multiple alerts to one um, sensible notification. And when you've already received a notification about something, then you won't receive another notification. Because if you're already nervous because you got a page because some um, service is down, you don't want to be spammed with notifications making you even more nervous. And um, well, the alert manager integrates with a lot of providers through that. One notable, for example, one, one notable one would be PagerDuty, for example, or Slack or email, which is not really the greatest one, but um, of course we support it. And um, something I want to talk about in specific in this talk today as well are silences. So that is, for example, if you have a maintenance window you know about and you're going to take your database offline for eight hours, let's say, then you know then that some specific alert is going to be firing. So you don't want to be alerted about that. So um, I asked how many people are familiar with Alert Manager? How many people are familiar with Prometheus? Cool. That's like a couple more hands. So um, just, just in general, um, Prometheus is a metric system. So Prometheus collects uh, time series data and um, that's something we can alert on. So the, most of the left side is actually irrelevant uh, for this talk. Um, it's just that Prometheus is a time series database and um, that it can evaluate the data it has to uh, produce alerts. And that's exactly the um, part that we're seeing over there. So PromQL is the query language that was developed for uh, Prometheus specifically. And um, in PromQL, we write our alerting rules. So if service X is down, let's say, then we want to uh, fire an alert. And uh, at that point, it, ac it actually leaves Prometheus and uh, that alert is actually fired against the alert manager. And we'll see later why that, uh, that's important. But this is like the general architecture overview of the two systems. So um, what does that actually look like now when the alert manager receives uh, traffic? So Prometheus actually continuously sends all of these alerts. So Prometheus continuously evaluates the alerting rules and whenever they trigger, it actually fires against the alert manager. Um, and so here, for example, we could see that we are getting lots of notifications all the time, right? But what the alert manager would then do with this uh, incoming stream of notification or alerts, it would group them logically into one notification. So let's say that these error, all these alerts were coming from the same um, 
or were grouped for the same service, then we can get all of these alerts in one notification. And um, let's say, um, because our cache server is actually slow, all of the other alerts may have been triggered. And that way we can logically uh, already correlate uh, in our notification. And depending on the uh, receiver we used, so pager duty, Slack, email, we, can, uh, we might actually get the, the full uh, individual alerts description, but that's, that, uh, that's configurable. So what that actually means is that the alert manager is a tool that reliably uh, sends, sends notifications. And part of reliability is that we are highly available, and that's what we're here uh, to talk about today. So let's uh, walk through an example of how infrastructure might grow with Prometheus and Alert Manager and um, what that means in terms of high availability. So we start our project and we write microservice number one, microservice number two, and microservice number three. And that somehow makes up our product and we actually start selling this to users and users start paying for it. So we set up Prometheus to monitor um, these services because if my services are down, um, I'm actually lo losing money. Um, so I want to be, I want to know what's happening in my, in all of my systems. But um, Prometheus only collects this data and evaluates it. And so when I actually want to get alerted about it, I need to set up the alert manager as well. So at this point, I now, when there's anything wrong with my microservices, then um, I get notified about that. Um, and as my company or my uh, project grows and my user base grows, I have higher um, SLAs and I start scaling my infrastructure, right? Um, and I make everything highly available. I have multiple instances of everything and that grows and grows. But as, I, as we make all of our user-facing software highly available, we want to do the same with our monitoring infrastructure. So, in, in the beginning, the microservices were a single point of failure. Well, in this case, now are Prometheus instances. And so we set up an, a second Prometheus instance, which is configured in the same way as the first Prometheus instance. And um, they now scrape the same data, evaluate the same way, and um, they send the same alerts to the alert manager. And the role of the alert manager now we can see is that it actually deduplicates even when um, two Prometheus, two separate Prometheus instances fire the same alerts against the alert manager. The alert manager makes sure that none of these alerts are notified twice about or um, a duplicate amount. But um, earlier we were trying to eliminate all of our single point of failures. Well now um, our alert manager is. And uh, we create a new instance of our alert manager, but now we see a problem where the alert manager was in itself uh, deduplicating these alerts before. Now that we've created a new alert manager instance, it's in itself deduplicating, but because there are two instances, it's still sending the, uh, the notifications twice. And so to solve this issue, we have implemented a gossip protocol um, for the alert manager instances to notify each other about the notifications that they've already sent. And that's basically what we're here to talk about today. Um, but just one step back, so why did we actually decouple the two systems, Prometheus and Alert Manager? Well, we just saw that all of those high, high availability um, contracts, they actually get kind of complicated as we scale, and so we want to keep everything time series related and evaluation related and contained within the Prometheus binary, and then separate from that, we want to have the alert manager because the, all the gossiping is quite complex. And so we can separate both of these concerns. So let's see what one of these alerting rules would actually look like in Prometheus. So here's an example for etcd, for example. Derek was conveniently uh, demoing etcd earlier. So in etcd, you actually have a, you have a leader, right, that uh, determines whether um, this node in your cluster um, can say whether writes are happening right now, or it basically allows writes, right? So 
But if there is no leader in an etcd cluster for a certain amount of time, that's a problem. And essentially your uh, etcd cluster is non-functioning if there is no leader. Um, and so that, that would be an, uh, an alerting rule that um, would signify that for us. And just to make sure that everyone, everyone understands that this is actually, there's nothing magic happening here. So within Prometheus, Prometheus actually just every rule, uh, inter, uh, rule evaluation interval just goes through all of the data or all of the um, rules that it has. For example, the one we saw on the previous slide and just evaluates all of those constantly. So a typical uh, rule evaluation interval would be something like 15 seconds. So every 15 seconds, Prometheus actually fires an alert against the alert manager. And that's very, really important um, for the high availability, high availability um, contract. <clears throat> and here's an example configuration for the alert manager. So uh, just to explain this, so the resolve timeout means that if we haven't gotten an, uh, a firing alert for five minutes, then we say that it's a solved, a solved alert. Um, and uh, down here we see routes. So this is actually like a tree structure in our, in our YAML where we can uh, do arbitrary nesting. And in this case, we group by jobs, for example. That's like the canonical label in uh, Prometheus to group a service, let's say, or something that um, belongs to each other. And we say that for an initial um, notification, we want to group alerts for at least 10 seconds. And once the first notification has gone out and we keep getting the same alerts, we only want to um, repeat this notification within one hour. And um, this is just, the, just an example here, but one of the uh, receivers um, I chose uh, a webhook here just, just out of an example, but it, this could, for example, be PagerDuty or Slack. So a high-level overview of what actually goes on in uh, the alert manager. So once a fire, uh, an alert is actually fired against the API of the alert manager, it uh, first goes into silencing. So silencing, if we remember, is the part that where we can say we don't actually want to no be notified about this alert Currently. So if there's a silence that matches for this alert, then we don't actually continue within this notification pipeline. And the next part is uh, very important. So depending on the um, position of the instance of the alert manager in the cluster, it waits for a particular amount of time. And that's, um, we'll see why that's important later for the gossiping part. And uh, once it's waited, it uh, deduplicates alerts, so it looks if whether a, notif a notification has already been sent. And if it's not been sent, it will send it, and after it's been sent, it will gossip to the other alert manager instances that it indeed has sent this notification. So what's actually <laughs> gossiped? Um, the send notifications themselves, so the um, confirmation that a notification has gone out, um, as well as the silences. But the received alerts, so the alerts that have been fired against the API are not um, gossiped, because that amount of data would just be too huge to constantly uh, gossip. So uh, how did we actually manage to do this? We used uh, CRDTs, uh, conflict-free replicated data types. So what that actually means is that uh, we can arbitrarily uh, merge all of the data um, that we gossip. And uh, that's a, uh, an eventually consistent system. So in, uh, in terms of CAP theorem, that would be a, an available and partition to tolerant system. And uh, this is how, in theory, we did it. But um, how did we implementation-wise wise do this? We used a library called Mesh by Weaveworks. Um, and that works exactly on the um, data structure that we want. So it's a last writer wins element set. So um, timestamp based, it just merges whatever the latest timestamp is, it wins basically. And um, it merges that based on a UID. 
Um, so just taking a step back, uh, why did we take on all of this complexity of writing our own gossip protocol and um, why didn't we use something like uh, etcd for example? Well, etcd in particular is a CP system and we wanted to achieve uh, an AP system. So what, and what that means in contrast is a CP system always ensures uh, consistency and that would mean in a, in a leader full system like etcd that there might be situations where writes are not possible. And that's like a catastrophe in alerting, right? You always want to have a, a system that is responding. And um, what our uh, guarantee for notifications here is, is that we at least once send our notifications. Um, whereas if we had a CP system, we might be blocking and are, are sending no notification. So we prefer sending a duplicate notification over no notification. And uh, yeah, so that's how everything works in theory. So let's look at some examples. And for silences, this is actually um, rather easy. So we have multiple instance of, instances of the alert manager and there is a call by a user to create a silence. And each alert manager has their own local database in memory, which is um, periodically written to disk, but um, in, uh, well, while, while they're up, it's actually all in memory. And so when this uh, request goes into the alert manager, alert manager zero, um, it's given a random UID. In this case, I just did, a, did an upcounting value, but it's actually ju just some random UID. And um, whatever the user specified as the query for this uh, particular silence will be inserted, the start and the end of this silence. And, um, but now the important part is, or the interesting part is, how is this gossiped? Well, it's actually pretty easy. When the alert manager zero merged this new data set into its own data set, it uh, noticed what the difference between its old database and the new database is and exactly that difference is then gossiped over the mesh network. And then alert manager one takes that delta and merges that into its own data set. So eventually um, it will uh, be synchronous or in sync. Um, and periodically um, each of the <coughs> alert manager instances make sure that their content is indeed uh, the same. And then it, again, everything's merged on a timestamp basis. So um, we saw how up, uh, creating silences work. Well, how does uh, updating them work then? We know the UID of this particular uh, silence and um, we want to change the start time of the silence. So uh, we know we tried, we tried out our uh, database main maintenance. We did some migration, let's say, and we noticed that our expected time of eight hours is actually much shorter and it will only take three hours. So we uh, put the start time five hours back and um, this is what happens in the alert manager. So the alert manager zero merges that new value into its data set and takes then the delta of that again and gossips that to all the other alert managers. And they'll, those then take that delta and merge it into, into their own data set. Um, based on the timestamp. So whatever the latest timestamp for this um, UID is, wins. Um, so for silences, this is pretty easy. We can just give everything a, a unique ID and that's what we can uh, identify it by. But for notifications, we actually have to make sure that different alert managers would create the, the same ID for uh, notifications, right? Because every alert manager instance uh, constantly gets all of the alerts and it must uh, see if it already has sent this notification. So uh, let's do a concrete example here again of a non-silenced alert. So Prometheus would send the, uh, the firing alerts to all alert manager instances every 15 seconds and 
Now we see um, why the waiting part that I mentioned earlier is important. So alert manager zero will wait zero seconds, so it will just continue uh, immediately, whereas alert manager one will wait for five seconds, and this is configurable. Um, but then alert manager zero, while alert manager one continues, um, no, alert, while alert manager one waits, alert manager zero uh, continues, and because it has not been sent this particular notification, it will actually send it, and at the end, it will gossip this state that it has just sent this notification. And after the five seconds have lapsed, yes? Is this some kind of like fixed priority or is it dynamic adjustment? Um, what exactly? The like time? Like if you remove alert manager zero now, don't you want to change zero automatically so the delay is constant? Um, yeah, so, oh, should I, yeah. So the question was that um, when one alert manager goes away, does this um, automatically adapt or um, would alert manager one, for example, keep its uh, waiting of five seconds? Is that what you were asking? So um, actually, when they periodically try to discover each other, so if uh, these alert manager instances can't reach each other anymore, then they um, will build a new list of alert manager instances that they can currently reach and then assign uh, new positions in the cluster. Does that make sense? So um, that way, yes, it is always ad adjusted again. So that one, uh, the goal is that al always at least one alert manager instance uh, only waits for zero seconds. Yes? Yeah, so that means that in a test frame situation, you have two, right? Two yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see uh, in, some pr in a partition um, how that works. Uh, sorry. The question was, um, so in a, um, when there's a network partition that there will be multiple uh, or could be multiple alert manager instances that wait for only zero seconds. Yes, that is, that could happen. So that is exactly, um, or yes, so we wanted to finish this one. So because uh, alert manager one has received this gossip data, it will uh, query its own database now and see, okay, this notification has already been sent, so I will not send it. And uh, now, uh, exactly the uh, case where uh, they can't reach each other. So um, the alert ma when alert manager zero actually wants to send its uh, gossip data and it can't, then alert manager one, even though it uh, should have received this gossip data, will wait the five seconds and after those five seconds would um, send the um, alert as well. Or if this has uh, this partition has been there for a longer time, then they might immediately both send um, the notification. But the guarantee is that they, that you will always get notified. So um, you will always get notified at least once. That's the um, goal of this. Um, but on a best, best effort, basically, um, try to deduplicate. Um, yeah. And, uh, so now we go through the same thing as we earlier did with the uh, silences, that uh, when there's an alert firing, this is not actually a user interaction this time, right? It's something that's uh, done by, uh, by a machine like Prometheus. Um, then the alert manager zero, again, just inserts it based on a UID. Let's say that we can actually create this UID and um, then gossips that because it has the delta, right? And alert manager one then again, merges this delta into its own database. <clears throat> but then the interesting part here is actually how do we get this uh, unique ID for this notification? Um, well, how it actually works is that um, we had this routing tree earlier, right? So um, based on each route and by the uh, group, by the group buys, um, on evaluation, uh, it creates uh, groups for notifications. So um, there, there can be multiple values of the job. So let's say uh, service one, service two, service three. And um, that would create three different uh, groups in this case. And each of these groups is then XORed with its route because this can be an entire tree, right? Um, so even if the group buys in the end could be the same, the route in the entire tree uh, makes it unique again. And then at the end, because um, each route can have multiple receivers. 
we also concatenate that with the receiver. So at the end, we do actually have a unique identifier for each of the uh, groups. So now that we've seen that how the, all of this is supposed to work in theory, let's have a look that this actually works in practice. Okay, okay cool. So uh, here I have my alert manager binary. I have um, a server written in Go that just um, uh, writes to standard out everything it receives uh, via an, an HTTP call, and that's going to be our uh, webhook receiver um, to basically test out what notification is sent. Um, I have an example uh, uh, configuration of the alert manager. So what that looks like is, oops, no, that's my binary. Um, uh, so that looks very similar to what we had earlier, except for, except for uh, we're not grouping by the job, but actually by the uh, alert name. Whether that's a sensible thing to do um, is another question, but uh, this is just an example. Other than that, everything is exactly the same as we saw on the slides. And um, I also have a proc file here. Uh, maybe it's easier to see like this, um, which starts three instances of uh, three, three alert manager instances, and then at the end, uh, the webhook server. So let's start that. So I do have um, three instances running. So that's on Ninety three, uh, ninety four, and ninety five, right? And uh, the first thing that I want to show is um, silences. So we can go to any of our alert manager instances right now, and we create a new silence. So um, could be alert name, test, and we insert a creator and hi. Huh? from the uh, core OS meetup. And we create it, and we can see uh, that it's immediately active. And we can go to all the other alert manager instances, and we can see that it was successfully gossiped to those instances. Yeah. Um, and now we want to look at uh, actual alerts. So silences was pretty easy. We can create uh, unique IDs every time, and we just merge data sets. That's uh, relatively simple. And so um, I have a script here that uh, would emulate uh, a system like Prometheus. It doesn't, doesn't actually have to be Prometheus, just any system that continuously sends uh, alerts in the uh, format that we expect. It's just a very simple uh, JSON format. And uh, so in this case, I just send a couple of alerts to all the alert managers. And the goal here is that actually we only receive this notification once, right? Because the first alert manager sends the um, data that this, alert, uh, this notification has already been sent. And after that, the other alert managers shouldn't be sending an alert, uh, a notification anymore. So uh, we have actually set successfully sent it to all of them. And uh, above there, we saw that they all received it. And now, after a while, we should see that, indeed, a notification has been sent to the webhook server. And it was actually only one JSON blob, so only one notifica notification went out. And if we now look at the alerts, um, then we can actually see uh, that these alerts are all firing. But we only send the, the notification out once. So that basically wraps up my demo. Um, and same as Derek, um, the obligatory we're hiring slides actually also in Berlin. So if you're interested in any of these things, um, yeah, we're hiring. Uh, are there any other questions? No? Cool. Thanks. <laughs>